I'm Jian Xin from the Department of Molecular Biology and Center for Computational and Integrated Biology at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. I'm currently a professor in genetics at Harvard Medical School. As a plant biologist, many people wonder how it works uh, working in a hospital and medical school. And I can assure you it's a great place to work on plant stuff. The department was funded in 1981 by Hal Goodman and Fred Asabo, and we have the first-rate plant growth facility supported by an outstanding uh, plant facility manager, uh, Jennifer Bush, and it's a great place to study plant biology using molecular, cellular, genetic, genomic, and bioinformatic approaches. What I would like to share with you today is our experience in studying the plant hormone cytokine signal transduction and um, what we wrote in a review, the fascinating advances that has been going on the past 10 years on cytokine signal transduction network. And first of all, I would like to introduce my co-authors. Their time and great efforts were essential. Ye Du Huang is currently a professor at Puhan University of Science and Technology in Korea. He's made major contribution in elucidating the complete cytokine signal network from multiple receptors to multiple response regulators to the nuclear response regulators as positive and negative regulators. And his lab in Korea, he has also discovered specific pathways that control cytokine signaling involving senescence regulation, vasculature control, as well as more recently innate immunity. And Bruno Muller currently is a group leader in Institute of Plant Biology at University of Zurich in Switzerland. Bruno created the first sensitive biosensor for cytokine signaling so that we can visualize cytokine signaling activities in plants. Using this novel tool, he discovered unexpectedly the novel function of cytokine signaling in early embryogenesis, specifically on the specification of root, cell stem, root stem cell regulation. One of the most remarkable features of plant life is their ability to sustain themselves for thousands of years, such as this 5,000-year-old bristlecone pine on the White Mountain. And in our daily life, this is a tree used to live right next to my apartment. And after it's been cut down, it didn't die. Within three weeks, 30 new plants sprouted out. I thought was remarkable. Even you see again and again in your life. And this is the picture, uh, an elm tree I took in the Boston Public Garden. And this is as close as I can give to you an example of reincarnation. Uh, new elm trees came out of the old elm tree, starting a new life. And the springtime like now, the most beautiful place in Boston is around the Charles River, where thousands or millions of flowers just came out. And the same places in the fall, they will all uh, shed their leaves and ready for the winter. And for this remarkable plant activities, that they re really need this essential plant hormone cytokine. It was discovered by Muller Scoop Strong in 1955 as an adenine derivative. The first physiological cytokine is T0 thing, and it's supposed to be having activities to promote cell division, differentiation, and delay uh, senescence in plants. Although in the last three decades or so, the use of Arabidopsis as a model system has facilitated identification of key regulators in many plant hormone signal transduction pathways, including auxin, ABA, GA, and acetylene. However, for two decades, people couldn't really use the same classical genetic seedling screens to identify mutations in Arabidopsis to help us understand cytokine signaling network. And that's because those genes that are important for cytokine signaling turn out to have they, are, they turn out to have redundant functions. Okay? And so the major breakthrough 
came out in 1996 is due to the heroic work of Kakimoto in Japan that he single-handedly uh, transformed 50,000 callus and introduced an activating library. And among those 50,000 transformants and using tissue culture system, a classical assay to uh, analyze cytokine activity, he was able to identif identify the first cytokine signaling gene called CKI1. And this gene encodes uh, histine kinase um, in plants. In the past, we know histine kinases are important um, regulators in bacteria, eukaryotic, prokaryotic uh, signal transduction. And now we know also that histine kinases are important for plant cytokine signaling. And then two years later, three labs, including Sugiyama Mitsuno in Japan and Keeper in the US, has then identified response regulators that will receive signals from histine kinases. And they turn out to be the earliest genes that can be induced by cytokine at the transcriptional level. And then two years later, in year 2000, Sakai and Okai in Japan identified another type of response regulators in Arabidopsis called ARB types. And those are different from A types in a way they're bigger, they have putative DNA binding domain, transcription activation domains, and they suggest they're transcription activators. With all those exciting information available, plus the genome sequences became available in year 2000. Yu Du Huang and Jin Xin at Harvard actually developed a cell-based assay and cytokine response reporters were able to discover the whole cytokine two-component circuitry involved in cytokine signaling. Um, in their paper, they show four different histine kinases, three response regulate, regulator as transcription activator, and four response regulator as feedback regulator, also cytokine early target genes. And their interactions in eukaryotes now needs this, this uh, phosphotransfer protein, we call Arabidopsis uh, histine phosphotransfer protein, AHPs, that connect signaling from outside the nucleus to inside the nucleus to regulate transcription. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time we can use functional genomic approach in cell-based assay to elucidate redundant functional cytokine uh, to component circuitry. And then following those findings in the early uh, 2000 and before year 2000, many scientists was able to then identify the genes and mutations and then provide de definitive genetic evidence for the complexity of cytokine signaling from receptor kinase to phosphotransfer protein to response regulator B type and A type as transcription activator and repressor. The contributions come from Kakimoto and Shinozaki identify AHK histine kinase receptor, Wang and Hongki Nam in Korea identified the first uh, recept receptor mutant involved uh, senescence. And then many groups that using reverse genetics, um, TDM mutants available, build up high order mutants to show that multiple receptors, multiple phosphotransfer proteins, multiple response regulators, A type, A B type, are involved in many aspects of plant growth and development. So, to guide you through our review, which is rather complicated because involving many aspects of plant signal transduction, revolving cytokine signaling in many different biological and tissue contexts. In the following uh, slides, I would like to show you the major figures we made as illustrations, I hope will provide you some guidance and so the information to help you read through um, the review without much trouble. In the first figure, we illustrated the current state of cytokine signaling circuitry. Basically, you can see there are multiple receptors, and they're involving receptors that can bind to cytokine. All the cytokine receptor as histine kinase that can constitute activate cytokine downstream signaling pathway. 
including CCAT1, they both were involved in multiple aspects of biological functions, and they can be located on the plasma membrane, or more recently, three labs shown that they can also be locally localized in the ER. Then they all converge on multiple response regulator protein to connect between outside the nucleus to inside the nucleus, and then regulate response regulators as positive regulator and negative regulator, and then control a broad variety of genes directly or indirectly, and control multiple biological functions. With those canonical cytokine components in hand, receptor kinase, phosphotransfer protein, and response regulators. Then we can move on to the next illustration, figure two. Then it introduced to you, I hope, that the amazing functions of cytokine, those major core components can be integrated into so many different contexts and tissues and organs to perform essential functions in plant growth and development, starting from male gametophyte regulation, pollen development, and ovule embryo sac development to embryogenesis. And then cytokine, of course, is also very important for shoot apical meristem regulation, and it's illustrated in the, uh, the whole plant part, in the seedling part, where uh, those cytokine activities are occurring. And then next, figure three, we would illustrate various very interesting cytokine functions in the primary root uh, regulation, including transcriptional regulation and post-transcriptional re regulation, uh, not only for primary root meristem growth and uh, determining cell division from differentiation, also the regulation of lateral root initiation. And more recently, several labs have been involved in discovering cytokine functions involving shoot stem cell vascular tissue uh, control, particularly in the cambrium cell uh, regulation. In the root uh, vascular tissues, there is also very important and interesting regulation of cytokine function that control um, differentiation of cells between xylene and from. And then finally, we also integrate the new knowledges in nodule formation induced by um, nitrogen fixation rhizobium, which will induce cortex cell differentiation, first proliferation and differentiation, differentiation into nodules. And the key role in cytokine um, function is also illustrated together with natural and physiological uh, role of cytokine in plant growth and development. And in all those uh, different contexts, you can see not only cytokine is important, it also has very intimate interaction with uh, another key hormone, such as auxin, and they could have synergistic effect in controlling proliferation, and they can have antagonistic effect in controlling cell specificity and differentiation. And finally, uh, besides uh, discussing specific cytokine core signaling pathway that are integrated into various uh, aspects of plant growth and development from gametes to embryos to root to shoe to vascular tissue to nodule formation, we also provide some information and discussion on the important roles of cytokine in the classical function of um, preventing senescence, in promoting or eliminating stress response in plants, and also the new functions of cytokine in innate immunity. That's illustrated in Figure 4. So I hope that going through the review, um, we have provided a brief history of the discovery of cytokine, uh, how scientists overcome the hurdles and use creative experimental approaches to discover every aspect of cytokine signaling and develop this uh, definitive core signaling two-component circuitry that uh, are essential for as almost ad every aspect of cytokine signaling. And, and basically, we um, provided uh, discussions uh, of and highlighted important um, discoveries from cytokine's role in get me formation, in embryogenesis, and in root meristem, shoe meristem 
uh, regulation and vascular tissue formation and in uh, whole plant stress, uh, senescence regulation and immunity control. Okay, and then I hope those studies will excite you to think about new questions and new approach to answer many of the open questions remain to be discovered and including um, how all the cytokinin components are functioning in the in the cellular context that how they move from one location to another how they're connecting to each other then control at the single cell level, uh, whole genome responses uh, to cytokinin together with other signaling paths where they cross talk with cytokinin. And then we have started to develop uh, psycho understanding of cytokinin functions using genetic approaches by isolating and building up um, high order mutants. But many of the mutants are still not now mutants that we hope that there will be more work to understand uh, the precise functions of each cytokinin signaling genes in terms of their overlapping and specific functions by um, more detailed characterization of mutants, higher mutants. But then we were also expecting to encounter uh, more hurdles in terms of building higher order mutants with reach some uh, state that are uh, causing lethality of the plants, then potentially we need to develop new tools uh, to be able to uh, use c conditional mutants or chemical approach to understand subkinin signaling in terms of its dynamic regulation and whole cell, whole genome uh, functions. And then at the end, I also want to mention that our review is mainly focused on the side of signaling aspect. And there are many uh, outstanding questions in where, where does cytokinin uh, come from? And the metabolic regulation of cytokinin is essential for the whole plant growth and development. The transport, the um, synthesis metabolism, and homeostasis cytokinin, how they transport in long distance, intracellular, in different organelles, also important questions to be uh, answered in the future. And I hope you enjoy reading the review, and hope, and I so hope the review will inspire you to develop new ideas and answer more uh, open questions, and maybe you know provide new insights that we have never imagined even in this review. Thank you.